Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, good morning. Regional Disability. We are pleased to have as our speaker, Sheikh Salman bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who will be providing us with a Bahraini perspective on this topic. It was only as a result of the tragic events of 1990 1991 that similar cohesive policies of cooperation came to be pursued by other states. However, even then, not all have offered the same level and consistency of support. Bahrain considers itself to have been the nucleus of the region's strategic defense from as far back as 1820, with the signing of the first treaty with the British government. Right through until the end of the 1970s, Bahrain has always been a keystone of Western involvement in the region, nowhere more particularly so than in the fields of trade and commerce. In the early years of oil exploration, it was Bahrain that provided the bridgehead for British and American survey efforts in the region. Throughout the 20th century, Bahrain has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to the ideals and principles recognized in the free world, utterly rejecting so-called revolutionary ideologies such as communism, fascism, or Nazism. Bahrain suffered economically and physically for its economy, enduring an Italian air raid in 1942 and communist activities directed against Bahrain right up to the end of the Marxist fall rebellion in the mid-1970s. Throughout this period, Bahrain continued to be at the forefront of the Gulf's and West's defensive interests. <coughs> in the latter half of the century, Bahrain became the forward operating base for the defense of the Gulf. And Bahrain's defense policy came to be entwined with the needs of the West's protective policies towards the Arabian Peninsula. Bahrain was the bulwark of the Iraq's ambitions in 1961 when Abu Qurayb assembled his forces on the Iraqi Kuwait border, ready to invade. Bahrain responded to a request from the Kuwaiti government, quickly realizing how critical the situation was, and despite the reaction of the majority of the Arab world, allowed British forces to deploy in Bahrain. Bahrain further supported Kuwait when Iraq repeated the same exercise in 1973, and stood with Kuwait again during the British will reclining tanker operations and the associated mine sweeping campaign that followed. In 1990, Bahrain became a major center for coordination of coalition efforts to liberate Kuwait. Despite the swift Iraqi occupation of Kuwait, the long-standing cooperation between the West and the GCC, particularly in Bahrain, enabled mass mobilization, preparation, and logistic support to be accomplished smoothly and with minimum effort. Of minimum today, I apologize, there was a lot of effort. <laughs> During the war, more than 350 aircraft were deployed in Bahrain. In addition to, in addition to Bahrain being a major air operational base, a further significant contribution to the war effort was its provision of facilities to run the naval campaign. The total number of personnel deployed in Bahrain exceeded 20,000, and wounded were evacu evacuated to the field hospitals, which had been erected to provide a capacity of more than 6,000 beds. Iraqi missiles targeted Bahrain, but thankfully with no casualties. Total costs incurred by, the Bahrain, by Bahrain to support the war effort were estimated to be US $2.1 billion in tangible costs, and approximately $7.2 billion in non-tangible costs. Since the liberation, Bahrain has always stood with its GCC neighbors to resist further Iraqi aggression. In particular, during Vigilant Warrior in October 1994, in this regard, Bahrain has closely cooperated with and supported the West's efforts to deter Iraq. On very short notice and without precedent, Bahrain was the first Gulf country to host a U.S. Air Expeditionary Force, the AEF, in October 1995. The AEF was then a new concept introduced in support of Operation Southern Watch and regarded as a gap filler for the temporary absence of a U.S. aircraft carrier. Furthermore, Bahrain has hosted additional consecutive AEF deployments, including the first ever deployment of B-1 strategic bombers uh, to the region. Over the last two years, Bahrain has hosted four of the seven AEF deployments to the region. In addition to uh, support Operation Southern Watch, Bahrain has allowed RAF tanker aircraft to operate from its international airport and has received several deployments of the RAF Nimrod aircraft. Bahrain's commitment to the enforcement of UN resolutions on Iraq also led to its hosting of UNSCOM's field office with the additional logistical support which this entails. In light of Bahrain's strategic importance and its historical commitment in supporting the defense of not only its own values and interests in the region, but also those of its neighbors and the West, it is of no surprise to see the U.S. Navy's regional operations centered in Bahrain. Since the establishment of the Gulf Area Command on the 1st of January 1949, the 
the us bahraini security relationship has evolved and deepened. Despite often intense pressure from some for Bahrain to cut these ties, Bahrain has allowed the now sent 5th Fleet Headquarters to move ashore, in the process creating one of the most advanced command and communication centers in the region. The center is certainly considered as the forward operating element for CENTCOM. In addition, in 1997, Bahrain approved a substantial U.S. multi-million multi dollar expansion of the administrative support unit Southwest Asia. In short, prior to the Gulf War, Bahrain provided the largest commitment to the West power projection efforts, and in support of the war effort, the second largest after Saudi Arabia. Such a level of commitment from such a small state might come as a surprise to an outside observer. However, those familiar with the history of Bahrain and the Gulf would find nothing unnatural in this. Yet this support has sometimes ex exerted a heavy toll on Bahrain and caused distractions at times when unity was essential. That is why Bahrain, Bahrain believes it is essential that all GCC states provide the required support on an equal basis so that we can achieve and maintain the security of the Gulf. Because of Bahrain's past experiences and support, we feel we have the insight to review defense cooperation with the West. Mr. Chairman, in recognizing and appreciating the sacrifices and efforts made by Bahrain, it has been possible to see clearly the past level of collective co commitment between the West and the GCC. Bahrain believes that we have been reactive for too long and that, that the initiative should now be seized to effectively plan together so as to fully benefit from all political and military efforts and achieve a common strategic objective, an objective that will be supported by the international community in general and the Arab world in particular. The GCC was established to build a common policy that would achieve and maintain Gulf security. To reach a single overall policy, obstacles in the path of GCC unity must be overcome. Hence, we need to address and realize the issues that cause disunity and disrupt development and set in motion practical efforts to overcome them. To analyze any cooperation, we start by looking at the elements that constitute the, the cooperation itself. The GCC states, being one half of the cooperation, must, as His Highness Sheikh Salem said, continue to improve the military cooperation among them before they can seek to cooperate with the West as a whole unified body. We believe that there are two major obstacles to achieving this. The first obstacle, is that GCC states sometimes perceive and prioritize threats differently, whether by type, size, intention, or even source. This obstacle must be addressed internally by the GCC, but also with help whenever appropriate from the West. The second obstacle is border disputes. Britain had realized a vacuum would be created by its withdrawal from the Gulf in the early 1970s. However, Britain did not resolve the border disputes outstanding at the time of its withdrawal. I believe the GCC states are capable of solving their own border problems, but I believe that the West and indeed the whole international community ca cannot afford to stand by and let outstanding border disputes ferment by adopting policies that preclude involvement. It is worth remembering that Iran invaded islands belonging to the United Arab Emirates because of unresolved territorial issues and now has the ability to threaten the freedom of navigation in the Gulf. The Iran-Iraq war was a result of territorial claims and, of course, such a claim was one of the root causes of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. Bahrain believes that a more proactive role by the West is vital now to help remove the seeds of future conflicts. Bahrain also feels that Western countries are in disagreement as to what role each country must play in this vital region. And there is also disagreement on the actual objectives they are trying to achieve. The recent UN-Iraq standoff is a particular example. We believe that the absence of a common strategic objective was the cause of disharmony between the Western states. We all learned from the Gulf War that in order to bring together and unite the whole international community, we must have an overall goal acceptable to all parties. That is why Bahrain believed that further military confrontation with Iraq was a last resort. And this belief was based on the following premises. One, that a politically premature military strike could have been counterproductive and provided the Iraqi regime with greater external support rather than the intended objective of weakening and deterring. And two, that allowing more time for diplomatic efforts may have brought about the necessary level of international consensus to produce a unifying stand with which to face the Iraqi regime. In brief, Bahrain believed that the optimum way to peacefully solve this crisis when there was no clear international or Arab mandate 
was through sustained diplomatic efforts, backed by military pressure, whilst at the same time achieving international consensus to deny Iraq the opportunity of exploiting any perceived differences in the positions of GCC states towards this use of force. If this was not done, there were three possible consequences. One, it could have provided excuses for further breaches of applicable Security Council resolutions, and military action would have lost its legitimacy. Two, Iraq would have continued its tragedies. Or three, a rift with unknown ramifications could have occurred, not only on the Arab front, where solidarity with the suffering of the Iraqi people, and sometimes with the Iraqi regime itself, unfortunately, is growing, but also within the DTC and its frontline efforts to face the Iraqi regime. Therefore, it is vital that the West first reaches agreement itself on the required course of actions before attempting to reach a joint and credible political understanding of the GCC states. Mr. Chairman, from its beginning, the West's military cooperation with the region was founded to defend the Arabian Peninsula, the Gulf region, and protect the vital interests of the West. Any cooperation requires a framework. The existing defense agreements, even if initially only bilateral, are the right tools for formalizing the process of cooperation. The West, as well as the GCC states, must be committed to the defense of the Arabian Peninsula and the West's vital interests. Initial consultation, followed by the use of force, is an acceptable mechanism only if the initial consultation is taken seriously by all. We should consult immediately whenever a GCC state is threatened, but similarly, there must be immediate consultation when force is needed to defend the West's vital interests. Bahrain believes this last element has often been found wanting. Adhering to this concept will serve all national interests and adherence is best provided for by a clear agreed policy for the use of force. Commitment to initial consultations will allow us to avoid dilemmas arising over the use of such force, such as those witnessed in the recent UN-Iraq standoff. Mr. Chairman, I wish to also raise two issues that are incidental to the GCC's defense cooperation with the West, but nevertheless are of paramount importance when considering the effectiveness of our partnership. They are consideration of the peace process and the provision of a joint strategy to combat terrorism. Bahrain, in common with all the GCC states, welcomes the recent initiatives to put the Middle East peace process back on track. <coughs> the peace process is a strategic option for the GCC, as well as the entire region. That is why it is vital that the defense cooperation between the GCC and the West must not contradict the current efforts to save the peace process or any other future initiatives or developments. On the contrary, it must support and enhance such efforts. In particular, UN resolutions should be respected and applied evenly and should not be undermined by a perceived bias. A further fundamental of our efforts should be a comprehensive, sustainable understanding by all concerned of the need to work towards establishing a Middle East that is free from all <coughs> weapons of mass destruction. These efforts must encompass all states with such capabilities. Bahrain, as well as other states represented here today, has been tragically affected by the phenomenon of terrorism. Today's terrorists have many faces, some of which might be acceptable to a few in the West, and they are capable of skillfully using the global media and modern technology to their greatest advantage. Bahrain's experience is that international cooperation is a prerequisite to ensuring that terrorists cannot organize, operate, and publicize their crimes, and it is vitally necessary to achieving justice. No safe haven can be provided for terrorists, their supporters, or fronts, and active and open dialogue between the concerned authorities in the GCC and the West is long overdue. Because if action is not taken, it is the West's interest that will be threatened over the long term. The scenario of a biological weapon in a suitcase is a disturbing, to say the least. Mr. Chairman, I hope I have provided today a brief insight into our friend's position regarding the future security of the Gulf region. My country is committed to ensuring the effectiveness and readiness of the GCC to face external aggression with one voice. We recognize the need for and welcome cooperation with the West, but remain concerned that much still needs to be done to cement build further upon the hard work already achieved. In turn, I will of course take back the partnering with me many useful and valuable ideas that have been so eloquently expressed by the participants. And thank you very much.